Thank you so much, Raleigh, and thank you, Trading Pub, for inviting us here today to speak to you about a subject that I am certainly so very passionate about. And I've got to say thank you so much for saying that I worked at um, an investment bank 15 years ago. It was actually a little bit longer than that. I've been in the markets for about 30 years. But I want to tell you we have a very special presentation for you today. And I brought Juan Maldonado on with me today, who is going to do live market analysis with you uh, after I do my presentation. So I'm going to spend 45 minutes, and Juan will spend 15 minutes looking at some markets. He is our Elliott Wave strategist. I've worked with Juan for a very long time, and you will you will really enjoy him and his work. So please uh, stick around until the very end, because after that, we're going to take Q&A. And I'd like to offer you a really, really good um, offer that uh, will further your education, and, and it doesn't cost anything. So navigating the markets. I just want to um, I just want to add something else. Yes, I've been an institutional trade. I was an institutional trader for 15 years, and I speak at the Traders Expos. But I just want to tell you because I'm just so proud of this and excited about this that my first book was just published by Wiley and it's called The Trader's Pendulum, The Ten Habits of Highly Successful Traders. And this is really all about the, it, it, it's, it's my experience for the last 30 years and my experience in working with traders for the last 30 years and the ups and downs that we, that we go through and how we can use objective means to temper our emotions so that we stay centered on the on the pendulum between fear and greed. So that's what this book is about, and it's really my life's work. So I do hope that you check it out and, and um, buy it if you'd like. Okay, this presentation is for educational purposes only. Past performance does not equal future results. Please do not construe any information found here as advice or recommendation of any kind. And I just need to read this disclaimer before any presentation that we do. Thank you. I always like to start with the three pillars of trading success. I'll run quickly through this because we have a lot to cover today. The analysis, the strategy, and the co coaching and accountability. Without one, without all three, it's like climbing up a mountain without climbing gear. I, mean, I really believe that a trader needs all three. You need the analysis to develop the blueprint. It's like building a house. You need a blueprint whenever you build a house. And that's, that's what we call the analysis. Then the strategy is like the tactics. How are you going to trade after you've done the analysis? And that's very important because that's where you develop your trade plan, which is your, your entry, your triggering your trade, and your exits, which includes your stop loss and your profit. And today we're going to talk about how you can set your profit targets using, using Elliott and Fibonacci combined and harmonics. And finally, coaching and accountability. It, Trading Pub is great because they really do provide a lot of great education for you. And then taking it one step further, it would be great for you to be part of a, a, you know, a trading community where you can post your trade ideas amongst like-minded individuals that are learning how you're learning and you can share ideas and get confirmation and get a pat on the back when you do well. And just put it out there so that you're not just in your head all day long trading. Because trading can be a very lonely business. And as I'm sure some of you may know, I certainly know. I opened up a, a, a futures trading desk, proprietary trading desk, after I left the bank. And for two years, I traded pretty well on my own. And it was uh, kind of lonely in there. <laughs> so... I, uh, I then decided to, to uh, do something else, and I started FX Trader's Edge to involve a large community of traders and be able to share some of what I have learned along the way. So 
accountability and and uh, team is important. So let's just go through analysis fairly quickly. A key pillar of achieving consistency is to have a thorough knowledge of the market to determine possible future scenarios and be prepared to take advantage of opportunities that arise. And that's really key. I don't know about you, but I like to sort of not guess where things are going. I like to plan it out, but that's just the type of person that I am. And I'm more of a swing trader, so I like to know what's you know, coming down the pipe. I like to have a blueprint for what uh, I'm thinking about doing and have a view. And I can only determine the view from the analysis. And the view is either going to be to buy, to sell, or to do nothing. So it's just as important to do nothing as it is to buy or to sell. It's really important to understand that before your trading session so that you just don't waste time and energy. Because how many of you have experienced what I've experienced many, many times where I've gone into the market and I've had just a fruitless day spinning my wheels uh, because there was either A, nothing to do, and I tried to make something happen, or B, I didn't do enough planning, so maybe I had the wrong view, for example. So in our analysis, we use Elliott Wave Fibonacci, and we just added harmonics to our regimen because Elliott Wave is and, for, and Fibonacci, well, Elliott Wave, the Elliott Wave principle is, is, is great, using Elliott Wave to um, count the waves and forecast the moves. And what harmonics does is it tells us where, uh, it gives us confirmation for the end of the wave five, or it might give us confirmation for the end of the wave three, or for the end of the wave four, to buy for the rest of the move for the wave five. And I'm assuming that you understand that a five wave sequence is waves one, two, three, four, five. You might not understand how to use it right now, but that's the Elliott wave sequence. It's a five wave sequence. So harmonics is icing on the cake for all the work that we've developed. And of course, both are based on Fibonacci, which, is, which ties them together and is, uh, is really the, the glue that, um, that joins them. And that's why they're so complementary. And I don't think there are many providers out there, or educators or traders even, who combine the two sciences. It, these are, these are real, really sciences. OK, strategy. It doesn't matter what strategy you use. Many strategies. All strategies are good as long as you follow your strategies. So this is the second pillar. And the strategy is used to identify the exact entry point, the stop loss, and the profit targets. We already discussed this. And removing the emotions is key. So by having a trade plan, that's how we can stay centered on the fulcrum between fear and greed. That's one of the ways. because. We have our plan, so why be fearful? Why be greedy? If we have our track record from our system and we know how it performs, then taking the trade is just a natural extension of that. We need to learn how to accept our losses and accept our profits graciously and just say, thank you very much. Let's move on to the next trade. So strategy is really important. Our strategy happens to be called the wavy tunnel. It's a moving average combination strategy with, with some, other, some other indicators. But the, the important thing about a strategy is that the strategy captures the market cycle. So you need to have a strategy that captures the trends and another one that captures the sideways movements, perhaps, or that, that, you know, that gets you into the trend. There are so you have to learn how to trade the market cycles, but we'll go into that in more detail. And then finally, coaching and accountability. Be accountable to yourself. Be accountable to a group. Have a little, have a trading buddy. Have have uh, or be a part of um, a community of traders where you can be accountable. Very very important. All right, Ralph Nelson Elliott. He studied various market indices over a 75 year period in the 1930s. When he was bedridden, he had an illness, a virus, I guess, and he poured over, I don't know how many, thousands of stock market charts, data, and he discovered that stock markets traded in repetitive cycles. 
and that these cycles or waves, he called them waves, reflected the emotions of investors. So it's just, it's just brilliant to me that he was able to do this without computers. It's just, um, it's, uh, it's amazing the work that he's done. And just to show you, he did this in the 1930s and it still applies to the, today. And by the way, when I worked at the bank, I started in the 1980s, that's where I first learned elite wave analysis when I worked at the bank. So we had an, an elite wave strategist sitting on the desk as well. And he only he didn't only do elite wave, but he introduced us to a lot of different uh, ways to analyze the markets. And elite wave was the most important uh, thing that he that he introduced to us. And um, so that's where it was introduced to me at the bank. Fibonacci, you're all familiar with Fibonacci. Fibonacci is terrific in coming up with our market retracements and our market projections for our Elliott Wave sequences. So when we have a five wave sequence, we always correct and then we continue on up. And that's where Fibonacci comes in. And we also need to learn about Fibonacci extensions because when we learn about the extensions, then we can extend our profits. That's how I look at it. When we don't think about Fibonacci extensions, it's very hard for us to extend our profits. So many traders, when they first start out or when, they, when they've been trading for a few years, then get to the point where they want to learn how to improve that risk-reward ratio or get um, get that get the wins higher than the size of the losses so if the size of the wins is greater than the size of the losses then you really don't have to win a lot of trades you can win fewer amount of trades fewer number of trades now this Fibonacci sequence is beautiful it's uh, because if you take the ratios if you divide one number into the next and then or go backwards the other way you get all of the retracement and extension ratios that we're familiar with today 38.2 percent 50 percent 61.8 percent and their inverses so those are all generated by the fibonacci sequence this is this is probably review for many of you but i'm gonna so that's why I'm brushing over it quickly so we can get to some nice examples. This is the eight wave cycle. Now this looks daunting, but don't let it be. It, it, what this tells you is that it's based on Fibonacci because you see the Fibonacci sequence uh, here and here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yes, I guess you can. And the Fibonacci sequence just counts the number of waves in this wave form. So you have one wave, and then if you break it down, you have five waves, and if you break those five down, you have 21. So this is five, uh, five, five, five is 15, and then three and three, etc. So whenever we have a trend move, it's, it's usually in fives, but that doesn't mean that we can't have extended waves. Just so you know, it's not a, you're not always going to count five waves and say that's the end of the trend. That would be a mistake. But we have tools to sort of show you how to extend the waves. And one, or one um, rule of thumb is, if you count five waves and you think it's the end, and then the market retraces marginally and then takes out the high well then our rule of thumb says that it's going to go to nine waves so it's going to go from five to nine let me see if i can write this so it'll go from five whoops nope can't do okay maybe i grabbed the wrong Pencil. No. Nope. Okay. Never mind that. It will go from five to nine. Oh, I know what I can do. I can use the. Oh, that's okay. And then after nine waves, you add another four to thirteen. So when a five-wave sequence 
becomes nine waves and then 13 waves, it's an extended sequence, but it's still within the trend, right? It's still part of the trend. It's the corrections that you want to use to get into the trend. So after a trend sequence, you have a pretty significant correction. And it's those corrections that we want to look at today so that you can get back into the trend. Okay, so you have, every time you have a wave two or a wave four, that's a correction, right? And they're in letters, A, B, C. So wave two, wave four, these are corrections. The trends are intact, and you really need to only draw a channel connecting the tops and bottoms to see when a trend is intact. I hope you're taking notes. No, only kidding, because I don't have this written down on the slides. So you can, the trend normally falls within channels, but today our job is to capture the, the, um, the corrections. Okay, and on the right side, we have the bigger correction. Once the sequence is done, we have an A, B, C, and this is called a zigzag, and that, that we use Fibonacci, and we run it from the beginning to the end to see how far the correction can take us. And there are lots of different Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci ratios that we would look at, but the most common ratios are 38.2%, 50%, and 61.8%. So let's just continue to move on here. This is a slide which illustrates that the that nature is, is based on the science of chaos, which means that complex shapes that look the same at different orders of magnitude. So if you look at the branch of a tree, the branch is similar to the entire tree itself. So self-fractals, that's called a fractal, where self-similar patterns composed of smaller copies of themselves ad infinitum. So we have fractals in nature just as we have fractals in images. This is a special image that is generated using Fibonacci. And if you take a smaller portion of the image and then magnify it, you will find a new image which is just exact. Here's another example. And these images can be magnified millions of times. It's sort of like the eight-wave cycle that I just showed you. As you go down to the smaller and smaller time frames, you see the same patterns repeating themselves over and over again. So fractals are generated using very simple Fibonacci formulas. And what that means is that these patterns repeat themselves in the markets as well. And once you train yourself to see the patterns, you'll see them being repeated in any market and in any time frame. That's the beauty of Elliott Wave Analysis, where you can learn the patterns, the five-wave sequence, followed by the three-wave correction, and apply them, whether you're trading the daily, the four-hour, the five-minute, the one-minute tick charts, it doesn't really matter. The patterns are there. So it's your job as trader to learn what the trend looks like and what the, uh, what the five-wave sequence is when the end of the trend is near and how to determine that. We're going to look at that today. And, and that's one pattern, for example. And then the other pattern that we touched on earlier is looking for that correction, that three-wave corrective, where once complete, you can get into trend again. So today, we're going to talk about paradigms, a different way of looking at the same picture. And many of you are looking this, at this picture right now, and I, I don't know what you're seeing. You might see an elderly couple or you might see a Mexican guitar player serenading his girlfriend or wife. So what this means is that everybody looks at the markets differently. And today we might introduce some new paradigms. So you might be able to look, through, look at the markets through different lenses. But let's see. 
how we go. I'm, I'm keeping it a little bit basic here, okay? Um, I just want to make sure that uh, everybody under, understands and, and hopefully you'll still pick up some things. Uh, there are three things a market can do, go up, go down, and go sideways. Now let's illustrate that a little bit with some examples. Look at this, look at this S&P. I took all of these, um, the examples today from the markets. So look at this S&P. This is a daily, and this is Quan's brilliant counting, which honestly, I don't know how he counts this because what does this market look like to you? Well, it looks like a sideways market to me. That's what it looks like to me, a sideways market. So if you're a swing trader, how can you trade this sideways market? Not very well, right? I mean, if you bought it here in March, look where we are in August, basically within the same range. So the S&P hasn't moved in all these months, right? So this is what we call a sideways market. Now, if I were, if, if you were a swing trader or a longer term position taker, if I were you, I would say, this is a waste of time. Let's look at another market because we have so many different opportunities that are just coming up every day. There's like lots of movement, lots of volatility. So we want to pick the best opportunities. We want to use our equity where we can get the biggest bang for our dollar. We don't want to spend it foolishly. We have to be very frugal with our money and our choices. I'm talking about the markets, really, but it's true in our own lives as well. So we have choices to make as traders. Do we want to trade this as a swing trader? I don't know. But if you're a day trader, you can certainly trade this by moving down the time frames. So when I showed you the, um, the up, down, or sideways before, that's where the different time frames come in. So let's move down to the four hour chart. Well, this looks lovely. I know that I could trade this four hour chart. This is trending. So within the sideways market, we have trends, right? Now, this is very interesting. We're going to get into support and resistance a little bit later, but well, I'm not going to jump ahead of myself. Let's move down another time frame. Ah, moving down to the one hour, we have another trend. And remember I said that the trends fall, fall within the channels? Well, this is, a, this is a good example of that. Now, this, the wave count is on here, so you can see what the view is. The view is that we should break down on the S&P because we see a wave one and we see a wave two and what follows wave two wave three but it's it it won't be confirmed until we actually probably take out these these lows and theoretically it won't be confirmed until we take out the bottom of wave one but i digress let's just move down to the 15 minute so here again you can go down to the smaller time frames and trade the different trends. But what happens when you get down to the smaller time frames? You lose your perspective. We started out on the daily and we saw one huge sideways market. So doesn't it make sense that, hmm, we keep in mind that sideways market and maybe what the highs have been and what the lows have been? Maybe that would be um, would be prudent because otherwise it's possible that we won't see the forest from the trees moving down too many time frames so the the question is in three slides okay i'm going to ask you a question in three slides related to that so hold that thought but this is a picture of doing of showing what a top-down analysis looks like. So the red line would be the S&P, for example, all right, even though it's, it's sideways, so it's not trending, so it would be sideways. 
and then the green would be moving down to a smaller time frame, let's say the four hour, where you can then begin to identify some of the swings within. And then the dotted might be the five minute, where you can identify some of the swings within the four hour. So this is what we mean by top-down approach. And this is, and I just wanted to bring this up because Oh, gosh, I get so many questions saying, well, I'm a day trader, I'm a swing trader, I'm a this trader, I'm a that trader. What time frame should I look at and blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to sort of um, simplify things. And if you're, if you're trading on the bigger time frame, like the, the daily, you might want to look at the weekly and the monthly just if you need to gain that perspective. But you're pretty well okay on the daily. But when you look at the smaller time frames, I think you need that bigger um, perspective. But we're, hold that thought for another two slides. Because now I just want to show you that the end result is going to be the same no matter what your trading style is. Like if you are a scalper or momentum trader and you're trading any one of these time frames, you're going to be, and this, I'm talking about currencies on this slide, but it will, it can apply to stocks or futures markets. You just have to, these are pips and not points, not ticks. So uh, if you're a scalper momentum trader, I think a, a good, good day is to look for 10 to 20 pips a day. And that translates into 200 to 400 pips a month. I mean, if you can do that consistently and really work your money management, then that's just fantastic. As a day trader, you're also gunning for two to 400 pips a month, but you might be getting, uh, looking for 20 to 50 pips a couple times a week. Okay. And as a swing trader, you might be looking for 50 to 100 pips in a week still looking for that 200 to 400 pips a month and the position taker might take one trade which captures that amount so i think you're getting the picture here that if position taker might take one trade to make that amount well that's because they're looking at the bigger time frame but it, it doesn't matter everybody's personality is different and however you feel comfortable trading that's where you are. That's where you are in your trading. Most traders start out trading the smaller time frame because they can see so many, you know, patterns over and over again, and take a lot of trades, and then develop into longer-term traders or swing traders. And of course, if you have a full-time time job, you don't have a choice. So this is the slide that I was talking about. So I always recommended three time frames. I always did for the top-down approach, top two for analysis and smallest time frame for trade entry. But how do you trade on a smaller time frame without looking at the big picture all the time, right? It just gets kind of in the way. So that's where support and resistance comes in. And by support and resistance, we can talk about market structure, which is just looking at the past and drawing horizontal lines across where the market has has been before pivot points is a good one fibonacci is a great one and harmonic patterns so let's just show a few of these now this is the canadian dollar now this is a beautiful trend move now earlier we spoke about buying on the pullbacks buying on the pullbacks buying on the pullbacks and buying on the waves two, two and four. Well, look at this uptrend. Let's just read the numbers here on the bottom. Two, 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 four, 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 four. All of the pullbacks are either two or four, all of them. And then all of the impulse moves are either ones, threes, or fives, all of them. So our job as traders, when we have a trend, when the, the moving averages are pointing up, the price action is pointed up in the direction, well, between two and, 12 and 2 o'clock on a clock face, that's when we need to buy the dips. So, so let me just... Um, mm. 
Okay. So let's just talk a little bit about entering and where you leave your stop loss. Let's just talk about the trend for a minute before I get into um, the support and resistance that I mentioned because I wanted to touch on this too. So if you're following the trend, then you, when you get in, you can leave your stop below the moving averages. You can leave it below the low price once price re reverses. And there's also another way. As an Elliottitian, there are certain rules that cannot be broken. So, for example, wave four cannot go below the top of wave one. That's one of the rules. It cannot go below the top of wave one. So, while this is a very big stop loss, that is a rule that cannot be broken. If you're counting one, two, three, four, and you take a position on wave four, you could leave your stop right below the wave one from an L8 wave perspective. The other rule that cannot be broken is wave two cannot go below the start of wave one. So you can leave your stop loss right below the start of wave one on any one of these sequences, on any one of them. So those are two levels that you can look at in leaving your stop losses based on Elliott Wave analysis. In terms of taking profits, talking about extensions, if you're just looking at wave one, wave two, and you're trading the wave three, this is a four hour, then you're looking at the four hour and that's really what you're trading, then you're going to run your Fibonacci tool from the start of wave one until the end of this wave one and project the wave three move. And the first target is equality with wave one, so the same distance. But most wave threes travel 1.618 times wave one. That's the average, 1.618. Now, you see a lot of different colors here. We use a color coding system based on Roy G. Biv, the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. But I'm not going to get into that right now. But indigo is is uh, indigo violet, indigo indigo, and the black is violet. Okay, so this magenta three is a bigger time frame than the black wave count. So just as I showed you that you could measure this black wave three, you could also measure the magenta wave three and go up the time frames. Okay, I know I'm teaching a lot here, but I wanted you to, um, yeah, look, we're, we're gonna discuss this now. This is the four hour Dollar Canada chart. It's a great looking chart. And I know a lot of our students uh, posted this, this chart in our forum and they actually, they actually bought down here. One of our members, posted this chart, labeled it with Juan's labels, and at this juncture, wave four, he said he was going to wait for the wave five for the C and then buy it based on one of our strategies. And I, I just, I actually sent him a little, um, I asked him today if he did buy it. I'm sure he did because he's very, very, he usually does what he says. Okay, so now the question is, if this is a four hour chart and we're day traders, we're not going to be trading off the four hour chart. What can we do to keep the four hour or the one day chart on our smaller time frames? Let's, let's go down. What I like to do is I like to use pivot points. And if you're on the, this is the 15 minute dollar Canada chart. So you might want to, um, I like to use daily, weekly, and monthly pivots. Because when you're day trading, you're going to run up against support and resistance. And this area in here is resisted twice. Once by the, this is the, um, the weekly pivot, and then this is R2 on the daily pivot. I, I'm assuming that you know what pivots are. So pivot points are one way of drawing support and resistance lines. 
Another thing that I like to do is I like to look at the previous day's high and low. And most trading platforms will enable you to do this so that you don't have to do it manually. But this blue line represents the high of the previous trading day's range. And this red line is the low of the previous trading day's range. So if we look at today, this is today, this is this blue line is the high from yesterday, you can see, right? And the red line is the low from yesterday. Well, this is very, very significant because once we take out yesterday's highs, where do you think price is gonna go? It's gonna go up and look at how it, it moves. It goes up to R1, goes down to support, which, which was yesterday's day's highs and moves up to the pivot, comes all the way back down again, and then moves up to R2. It's really, it's, it's really constrained within these pivot levels. So for day trading, this is something that you definitely want to have on your charts. And I've been using yesterday's range, the last 24 hours range, for a very, very long time. Oh, I only have five more minutes before one is on. Okay, I better move it fast. Um, time flies when you're having fun. It's not fair. Okay. This, now, this is a chart. I scrunched it up to show you it's all of the day's highs and lows with the pivot points. And I want to show you, I want to tell you one more thing here. Let's just go back to, I think it's here. Yeah, right here. This is the swing. Now, how do you know to buy at a certain point here? What can you look at when it feels like the market is falling through the floor? If we have a long red candle here, it's going down. This is the four hour. What's going to stop it from going any further? So this is where I drew a line here, okay? And let's go back up to this chart. I want to show you. There's absolutely no, there's no support in the near going back a couple, several days here. So it sort of, it, it went down and it spiked and it was kind of volatile. But if we knew all it was trying to do was to sort of fill in this gap right here where it moved up very quickly with no real uh, price action in between, right? So that's why, I mean, this is the area that, and you hear about gaps being filled in the futures market because it's not a 24-hour, not all markets are 24-hour markets, but currencies are, so there's no real gap because this happened during actually a trading session, but it, it, it just gives you some perspective. It, it would give you confidence. You'd say, okay, got it. Maybe it's got to go down to fill this. No problem. The wave count is saying to buy. My view is saying to buy. And you also, you know, will get support at, with your pivots. So I don't know. I just thought that was, uh, that I wanted to share that. And this, um, yeah, all corrections, A, B, C, okay? Now, I want to mention, yeah, there was, there's another thing that we would want to look at. Earlier, I said harmonics comes into play at the end of a wave four, potentially. So what I did was I just took the basic harmonic pattern, AB equals CD, and when there is a perfect reciprocal relationship like there is here, and reciprocal relationship means that when point C ABC retraces 61.8%, then D is projected at 1.618%. 1.618 is the inverse of 0.618. So this is a perfect reciprocal relationship which gave confirmation to buying in this area. Okay, it did spike a little lower. 
Like this was the actual point, and um, and by going down to a smaller time frame, one would have been able to look for some reversal candles in this area. So that's how we use harmonics when we're looking to uh, initiate to trigger a trade, take a position. Oh, you're right. The point B is saying, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, my gosh. Where is the point B anchored? I don't know what I did here. Okay. This, yeah, you're right. You're right. My apologies. I need to go back to the chart. I made a mistake. So it still might be, it's probably still a good reciprocal relationship, but it won't be this one. It will be more of a 38.2% and then the reciprocal of that. I was doing this so very, very quickly that I um, I did it too quickly and I missed it because I wanted to, I saw this and I said, this is, this is nice. Okay. The B needs to go up here. Excuse me, and thank you for pointing that out. My apologies. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, speaking about the Canadian dollar, the other thing, since we're on the Canadian dollar, I just want to say that if there are any relation, it's a commodity currency, so if there are any relationships with any commodities, you should definitely have a look at them. And Dollar Canada is very well correlated with oil because it's an oil producer, producing country. So look at this. This is the oil. Okay, we have oil here, oil going down. And I took the inverse of the Dollar Canada. So it's it's um, US Dollar Canada. It's Canada, it's, it's the inverse of how we normally look at Dollar Canada. It's, I took the inverse so that it would be consistent with the price of oil. So as the price of oil drops, the Canadian dollar weakens. Now, in the charts that we just looked at, the Dollar Canada is moving up. So it's US moving up and Canadian dollar is weakening. So by taking the inverse, we can see the correlation with oil. And there has been some great correlation all along here. Okay? All right. I don't know if we have time to do this, but this is we already discussed this, that you want to be buying in the wave twos and the wave fours in order to catch that trend move. And when Juan does his analysis now, I want you to have a look at at all of the trend moves and the corrective moves, and Juan will speak you through them and give you a great analysis. And I just want to say one more thing, that corrections aren't all the same. So we talked about the zigzag, but we also have a sideways correction that shows up in the markets, and we also have a triangle correction that shows up in the markets but you'll see those. And I think the, the, my last point that I want to say is when we're coming to the end of the trend and we're looking to get in at the end of the trend, the market moves up, it comes down, and then we, make, we take out the high or we make a new low. Once we take out this high, that's when the new trend begins. And that's called a one two three reversal pattern and when we have divergence with a trend line break and a one two three reversal that's that's usually the sign of the beginning of a new trend so you can write this down we don't have time to study this today but divergence trend line break one two three reversal Okay, and here is the Dollar Canada example where we have divergence where price makes a new high and the oscillator doesn't. And then we have a one, two, three reversal. And the only thing that I caution that I have here is when we have the wave counts, we understand that by selling here, it's merely the correction down. We have to understand that and that we want to get ready, we can sell it, but we, we know that it's, we have to measure where it's going to go because we want to be prepared for the next move up. We can certainly trade corrections and trends. 
but we, we need to be prepared. And that's what the wave count gives us. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Juan now for live markets. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jody. That was excellent. Hello, traders. Thank you for being here. My name is Juan Maldonado. I'm going to be with you the following um, minutes in order to talk about the live markets. We are having here the euro dollar on the monthly chart. Always is important to start from the big picture. Even if you are going to trade the five minute chart at the end, you have to understand the monthly chart and then the weekly, and then the daily, and then the four hour chart, and so on. And the Elliott Wave Theory is fantastic in order to help us to have all the time frames at the same time, because the market is fractal. And if we don't have something like the Elliott Wave Theory, when we go to lower time frames, we are going to forget what is happening on the higher time frames. And then we go to the five minute chart and we are going to be completely lost on those time frames. It's extremely important to analyze, first of all, this big picture, the, the monthly chart. That is the one that we are going to start. So this is the, the euro. This is our wave count that we have been having for years. And the good news is that the market is trending. It's trending in a bearish trend but it's trending because before this bearish trend that started here on may 2014 the market was sideways and was extremely difficult to trade anyway uh, we followed the waves inside and and was um, we have some fantastic trades inside this consolidation but of course it's easier to trade when the market is trending the idea with our wave count is that the price after the drop of the 2008 that was from the 160 19 all the way down to around the 122 79 we are calling this a wave a wave a orange then we got the consolidation and the label for that consolidation is the b wave and the active wave, the active wave right now is the C wave orange. In order to have the targets for this move down, what we do is that, first of all, we measure the first leg, the wave A. And then using FIBO, we project from the end of the B wave all the way down. So we are going to do that exercise in just one second. But it's important to understand that the projection that I'm going to do with this leg is going to be based on the first leg down. Now that we understand that, let's add the FIBO. And here we have all the projection. And the most common target for the C wave is the 100% of the wave A. That is a quality setup. And in terms of the price, that's the 103. 103 will be our next target on the euro. And we will check how it's going to react the price at that level um, in order to see if it wants to follow to the next target that will be the 127.2% of the same relationship between A versus C. And that will be the point. 93 area that will be like the secondary target but for now we're going to focus on these 100 percent this is a monthly chart so we know that the active wave is the c wave when we start going down like the weekly chart we can activate more waves so i'm going to activate here some waves and then i'm going i'm going to hide some of the waves again the plan on the weekly chart is that the that the c wave is going to have 
a, a five wave sequence in this case is extending it's something actually very simple but the main the main um, fact on the weekly chart is that this retracement that happened um, on the middle of, of March and went all the way up is just a continuation flag is just the bearish flag and once we have the completion of this wave 4 the price is starting the next leg the wave 5 in order to be conservative what we do in this kind of trades no matter the time frame is to target the previous low so the previous low is at the, around the 104 74 area we can set the target you can take notes the 104 70 area 74 is going to be the target for this weekly setup now that we understand that context we can continue going lower the the next time frame is the daily chart on the daily chart i can show more waves because the market is fractal and we are going to have waves inside the waves and more waves inside the waves and we we continue having the um, context of the monthly chart of the weekly chart of all the multiple time frame fibos and having all this context of the market is going to help us a lot to find our trades on the daily chart we have the breakout of the trend line right here we have the breakout then the price goes a little bit lower sorry a little bit lower here and then retraces to make the pullback the pullback to the trend line so we are calling this the wave here the wave one the wave number two our Elliott wave structure for the euro is a one two one two that i will explain this to in a second and then if we have the confirmation of the end of this wave to red the price will drop and here will come the strongest wave the wave number three the wave three is fantastic because it's a powerful wave is a wave that is going to move quickly that the retracements inside are going to be extremely small and is fantastic always to uh, go with the trend and to go with the wave three the target don't forget we talk about that on the weekly is the 1047 area the, the previous low area because that's a support and we don't want to continue keeping our trade below the support we have some weekly and monthly targets but we will take decisions about those targets later for now let's focus on the daily chart well now the four hour chart is going to show us the inside structure for the wave number two the wave number two right here is active it seems that is active and we have set the target at the 11170 but anyway we have to be ready for everything because here is the key we have after the price hit the 78 six percent of retracement that was the 11129 the price has been moving down during this week and inside we can count a three wave sequence the main scenario that i am working with is that the price is going to reverse soon in order to make another three wave sequence up to the 11170 that is my, my main wave count and my my main projection we know that the price on the higher time frame is going down after that so we know that the bearish pressure 
is huge. And that's why we have to be ready. We need to have an emergency plan in case that the wave two already ended, that the wave two, what if the wave two already ended here? So how we can tell, how we can know actually is pretty easy. If the price makes something like this right now, a uh, flat consolidation can be like a triangle, something similar to a triangle. And then it moves, moves down again. That will be a five wave sequence. And that will confirm that the wave two ended. Then in order to find the trade, we can wait for a three wave sequence up, a retracement, and we can do our FIBO, or all of our analysis. We can also apply harmonics and everything. And, and we will short because having a five wave sequence will mean that the wave two ended and the price is ready to reach that 1047 area on the daily chart. So ended wave is going to help us to confirm if the wave two ended or not. It's a matter of patience, it's a matter of following the price and always having that emergency plan in case that the previous wave already ended. So that's the, the plan for the for the euro dollar. Very clear um, daily chart it will be the price going to the 10470. And inside the waves is a little bit more complex because we're finding the end of the corrective wave. Now let's take a look on oil. Oil has been fantastic because we found the end of this wave of the wave four red and encircled. We confirm that uh, that end with our system right here with this red candle. That was our confirmation. So it was sideways for a while, but finally that red candle confirmed that we are going to test the previous low, the 4233 40, area. That's our target on the daily chart for oil, 42.33. The price is going down and is making or building the wave five red encircled. It's an impulse that the structure, once it's, it's complete, it's going to be something like this. So it's going to make a new low below the 40, the, this previous low 4183 area. But we always suggest to take the profits on that support because below that the market is going to be divergent, uh, is, is going to be extremely risky to trade below that level. So we are in a clear bearish trend. And we can do the same exercise that we did with the euro going down. On the four hour chart, uh, the oil is setting up a fantastic, fantastic trade because it's building the inside wave number four. The wave four, talking with uh, using here the FIBO tool, usually ends at the 38% of retracement of the wave three. That's the 5175. So that's going to be our target for oil. Uh, for the end of the wave four, and once it gets to that level, is going to make the continuation down. So the trading plan is very clear. We got here the consolidation. Inside is going to look like this, A, B, C up. And once we have the completion of the three wave sequence for the wave four, at the 51.75, the plan will be to start looking for short trades. Can be uh, any reversal, like a candle reversal or a one to three reversal to, to trigger. Then the confirmation will be the trend line, but usually the breakout of the trend line is too late to trigger, it's too expensive to short when, when the price breakouts the trend line and the target for that trade, if we are trading on the four hour chart, will be the previous low 
4670 to take partial profits and if we want more we can look to the left and find that previous low the 4257 area and that will be the trading plan for oil so that is the analysis for today thank you very much for your time now jody is going to continue with the webinar thanks a lot Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> that was great. Now, there's some questions here. We're going to take some Q&A now. How often, does, how often do the waves happen and with what certainty? Hmm. I'm wondering if the waves are happening all the time. I'm wondering really what the question is. Maybe yeah, you like, can like rephrase the question. Uh, yeah, sorry. Like yeah. you're going to have always the market is gonna is gonna have waves. Any market is gonna show you waves all the time. But actually the question that you need to solve in order to have the trade is when the wave is going to end. So so that's why the strategy comes in to tell us when and where the wave ended. And in that moment we start placing our trades because always we are going to have waves in the market. Okay, are there any other questions? Juan and I are here for questions. If I understand waves are based in strength, Um, how closely do market moves emulate Elliott waves? And let's answer those first. So the strongest waves, the strongest wave is wave three. I guess I didn't explain that. I was going to. And yes, so the wave three has the greatest slope. And you can actually measure the slope of all the waves. And you will see that the wave three has the greatest slope. So it is based on strength. Absolutely. And then the wave five is when you see divergence, you usually have a weaker wave five than you have with than, than uh, the wave three. The market moves emulate Elliott waves. Well, they absolutely emulate Elliott waves. And I can tell you that Juan has labeled every single market and every single time frame that we are co co uh, covering as an organization. So all Elliotitians label all of the waves on the charts. Oh, great, thank you. Good explanation. Um, you're not required to use Motive Wave software. You can, but if you would like to, you most certainly can. And we actually have a, um, a two week trial if you'd like, and you could, I'm just going to post it in. Okay, Juan, this is very interesting. Is the analysis you just went through written down somewhere for review and reflection? Only on this recording, Jean. Okay, only on this recording. Where can I go for a primer on Elliott Wave? It's a bit over my head at this point in my trading. Well, you know, maybe it's time to get to our free offer. How about that? Because I think you're going to love what I'm going to offer. I'm going to offer you an Elliott Wave primer. All right, and then we can take some more questions. So let me show you the offer right now. And I think you're going to be very happy. We are offering, and this training is coming down shortly, so because I actually, honestly, I mentioned this training to um, somebody that I was talking to, another educator, and he said, you're offering all of this for free? What are you, nuts? He didn't say nuts, but he, 
who said, you know, this is, this is, uh, you shouldn't be offering all of this wonderful education. I showed him what we were offering. You, sh you shouldn't be offering all this wonderful education for free. So let me just tell you that if you are interested in either learning more about Elite Wave Theory or learning more about support and resistance or the fundamentals, then you want to take this free course. And not only do you learn the theory, but Juan is going to be posting his weekly analysis there on all of the markets that we cover as an organization. So all you have to do is you go to fxtradersedge.com forward slash trading pub. That's the link. And you sign up. You put your name down and your email down. You hit submit. And you're going to get a totally free course here. I'm going to show you what you're going to get. It's just, it's like, it's like a paid course. You're going to get four full workshops. On, on the workshop number one is an introduction, right? Company presentation, trading as a business, fundamentals versus technicals, process to make progress as a trader. Workshop number two is all about support and resistance, so a lot more than what we covered today. Workshop number three is on the fundamentals and candlestick analysis, and we even go through, show you how to trade the news. So you're going to learn a lot from that. And workshop number four is our Elliott Wave course offerings. But when you sign up, make sure you put us on your safe senders list because for the next seven days, you're going to be receiving an email from us with free Elliott Wave, two free Elliott Wave videos, a candlestick primer, and a few other things that I can't remember right now. So for the next seven days, if you sign up, Please put us on the safe senders list. You're not going to want to miss all of this great stuff. And you, you will get right up to speed on your Elliott Wave knowledge. OK? So that's what we're offering. Now, this is the weekly analysis that is already posted there from this week that one did on the weekend. and. You're going to see full analysis on all of the markets. And all you have to do is put your name and email address and hit submit, and you will get access right away. So this is a great offer. And I, I think a lot of these videos will answer many of your questions. Because I see some of you have missed the elementary knowledge about the theory of Elliott Wave, what can I do? So that's what I would like to suggest that you do. Get the basic education in Elliott Wave analysis. I think you'll be very, very happy. Okay. And I'm just looking back at all of your questions. And there were quite a few questions about that. And yes, we do use FIB retracements and FIB projections. And you will also see that in the videos. That's how we measure our wave threes, our wave fives. That's how we measure our trend moves, by using FIB projections. And we use Fibonacci retracements to measure our waves two and four, our retracement moves. You're not seeing the sign up box on the site. Okay, well, we'll make sure that when you get the, we'll make sure that link, that this link works for you so that you will see the sign up box. Trading pub. Okay, Bill signed up. So it looks just like this. It looks exactly like this. fxtradersedge.com forward slash trading pub. Peyton signed up. Constantine is saying to open up a new browser. That's a good point. Yeah, make sure you get rid of the cookies and open up a new browser. 
Yeah, okay, good, it works, fantastic. Yes, you trade Forex? Yes, we do use MT4, absolutely. We have two trading rooms, uh, New York and a London trading room as part of our trading services, and the guys running the rooms use MT4. We use Motive Wave just for our Elliott Wave analysis. It absolutely works on Ninja Trader. Everything you can trade Elliott's on any platform that you're using. You don't need any specific platform. There's a there's a question here on WXY. And actually, that is well explained in, in uh, one of the videos, the first two videos. But when you think of an ABC correction and you think of a W, think of a W as connecting two ABC connections, corrections. So you have an ABC and then a little connector and then another ABC, and you can label that. W, X, Y. Okay. We do use indicators as part of our uh, proprietary uh, trading. That's that's what we use. We use we have the wavy indicator. It is uh, wavy tunnel and semaphores and and the bungee. Those are our indicators that we use. Um, but we can't. I can't just tell you what they are right now because they're they. You have to set them up, and um, you'll probably learn a little bit about it in the in the free member zone. And we do have a live trading room, and we have daily wave counts. Absolutely, we have a live trading room in New York and in London, and we have daily wave counts as well as a weekly analysis room and even a stock room once a week as part of our trading services. So we're going to, you know, hopefully tell you about it once you take the free course. You'll you'll uh, be able to learn about that, what we offer you. So we have a fantastic program called Elite Wave Ultimate. And Elite Wave Ultimate, once you get into the back office or the members area you will see a link to sign up for your course the course if you would like to it's called Elliott Wave Ultimate the Convergence of Elliott Fibonacci and Harmonics it's a very very intensive course it's fantastic with a lot of support a lot of webinars and and modules and just just support all around Okay, so you can go and find out um, the pricing in the website. We've given you a very special offer in the website as well. Okay, so really your job is to just sign up for the free course and you can find out the pricing and everything once you're in there. Um, and look at the, the fourth workshop is on our program and there's a little orange button there which takes you right to our program. Okay. We do not teach you how to trade binary options, but our strategies work with binary options. I'm just answering questions here. The main markets that we trade and that we analyze are we do we analyze many currency markets and the S&P and oil and gold every single day. And please, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, Jody at fxtradersedge.com. I'm happy to answer your questions if we didn't answer them so far, and, and it would be our pleasure. Okay, I'll take one or two more questions, and then we've got to call it a wrap because time is up. 
Are the FIB retracements or extensions different for FX than for equities and commodities? No, they're the same. They're the same. The weekly analysis is posted every Friday, actually. And the daily analysis is posted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's Juan's analysis. So thank you very much, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you uh, in, the, in, the mem in the free course. And hopefully you want to learn more and join our community of Elite Wave Ultimate Traders. Thank you very much.